is terrific to be invited to this forum this evening. Uh, and I commend the MTF on their uh, efforts in terms of advocacy around public transport. Uh, they've been doing it for a long time. It's a bit of a hard slog, but thank goodness you're in there doing that slog because it's important that we uh, concentrate on transport and what it means for the future of our city, but particularly uh, in this forum, what it means uh, for the future of Millenbeck and what this municipality looks like. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, Eltham is a beautiful part of Melbourne. It's why you choose to live here. It's very green, has amazing green spaces, uh, environmental values and remnant riverside bushland. It's got a great quality of life and an extraordinarily engaged community. I to say that's what I really love about this area uh, because it is that uh, engaged community which reinforces the values that are important in this region. However, what I will say about Eltham is like the rest of Melbourne's northeast, it's struggling under the amount of traffic on our roads during the morning and afternoon peak. We know from the recent census that 72% of people in Eltham get to work by car and only 12% use public transport. The average in Melbourne is 16%. Uh, and really what's uh, a factor in that is the exceptionally poor provision of public transport in Eltham. Indeed, the North East is the worst in Melbourne for public transport. Your neighbours, the city of Manningham, unfortunately has the dubious distinction of being the only local government area in Melbourne without trains or trams. And in fact, they struggle with buses too because often they are broken down, too full, bypass stops, are used in other areas and provide no opportunities for that community. But back to this community, we have to give you alternatives to driving if we are ever going to reduce congestion on our roads. Building more roads will not fix the problems, it simply induces demand. So build more roads, get more traffic, it's pretty straightforward. The Greens have developed comprehensive plans to shift some of the people from cars to public transport to take the pressure off our road network for those who have no choice but to drive. And we know that some people don't have choices. We know also that people need to have more frequent train services, a proper bus network that people actually want to use, and better pedestrian and cycling infrastructure so people can walk or cycle to the station and other neighbourhood destinations. It's great that the recently completed duplication to Rosanna Station means that there's capacity for three more services to Greensboro. However, there has not been a commensurate increase in feeder bus services to meet those trains, such that people still have to battle for a car park at the station. Indeed, it's one of the largest failures that it is not that there's been no investment by this government in new bus services in the middle to outer suburbs of Melbourne. This is why the Greens are developing a new approach to buses, a new bus, a rapid bus network across Eastern Metro to alleviate some of that traffic on roads. The only way we're going to reduce congestion on our roads, of course, is to get people out of cars and into viable public transport services. In looking at some of the core transport deficiencies, we've identified that there's a couple of routes which would make an enormous difference to the people of Eltham. Uh, one, of course, would be uh, an interchange with Eltham Station, uh, would head west and terminate at La Trobe University. Uh, we envisage that journey would take 15 minutes because of on-road bus priority infrastructure. The other route would go all the way to Monash University's Clayton campus in only 45 minutes. The reality is, though, of course, that we need to give buses the priority they need on our roads to be a viable alternative to the car. The services we envisage would have a 10-minute frequency on weekdays, offer free Wi-Fi and device charging to provide high-quality rides to entice people out of their cars. We'd also like to see our buses uh, go to 100% electric because it's a quieter and cleaner ride than the current diesel fleet and actually provides other opportunities in terms of... Uh, air quality uh, and comfort as well, and amenity um, issues as well. A part of this, this new bus network model would be, in a, it's an addition to the existing bus network. So we're not saying people should lose their neighbourhood services, probably shouldn't, they wouldn't lose their smart um, bus services either. This is actually something that complements what's already there on the ground, but a rapid bus network would be a new service layer on top of that that would interchange with those local bus services, trains and trams. 
And interchange is a really important word in all of that because often what we see at the moment uh, the buses are not meeting trains. Uh, there's a, a lack of connectivity with trams as well. And overall, those barriers uh, are just too insurmountable for people to, to consider that public transport is going to be an option for them. And all too often, they end up getting into their car instead. Of course, it's not just about cars. It's about active transport. We may need to make sure that the shorter trips commute to the train station, that people have the proper infrastructure in place if they want to walk or cycle. Uh, I, I think I've been incredibly disappointed that there hasn't been recognition for the potential of active transport. Uh, there's been a, a, a pot of money announced for cycling and pedestrian infrastructure. Uh, but at this stage, we can only locate two projects that ever received funding out of that, that money, uh, and none of them are in this region. The state government only invests a couple of do dollars per capita in cycling and pedestrian infrastructure a year. And when you look at cities like London and Copenhagen, that spend is $30 per capita per year. So it's an enormous gap and an enormous difference. And that's why outer suburban growth areas lack even simple pedestrian paths and existing cycle lanes are cracked and unsafe. And of course, there are numerous gaps uh, we see in our principal bike network as well. And on cycling, you know, it was a great disappointment to me to see that the government didn't support the Greens Bill for minimum passing distance laws in this state. Uh, we knew it was uh, an important thing that needed to happen to keep cyclists straight. Um, that's safe, I should say, uh, and we know that people generally want to obey the law and so if it was enshrined in law then uh, in fact people would try and do the right thing by a cyclist. Sadly, there has been 35 cyclists who've lost their lives in Victoria since the Andrews government was elected and still we don't have minimum distance passing laws for cyclists. There is a lot I've got to say about trucks. Hopefully that comes up in questions because my goodness, seven minutes goes really quickly uh, when you've got a lot to say about transport. Uh, for the Greens though, it's about creating livability, it's about maintaining livability, it's about getting people out of cars and onto public transport having viable solutions for them. There's a lot of ways that can happen, but ultimately we cannot continue to build roads and expect people to drive around. It is simply not going to be a viable solution for our city.